Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that one has. I think Colin is just really going to say it. Let's get him a few minutes.
This is what a test look like, looks like. It's just um, a normal procedure um, that does various things. So here you're, you're um, assembling the data and making the change and validating the results. Um, any questions about this tool? This is something you've used? Does anyone here use T C C? <laughs> yeah, the documentation on it is just awful. Okay. I mean, that, that's something that needs to, needs to be sorted out because it's not possible to follow. I think you're right. Um, so, so we, we, yeah, so we're, we're a tool that's obviously a build on TCPT, so we sort of inherit whatever they produce, but it's something that we could put pressure on, on Sebastian and Dennis, who incidentally are here today. So they have a session at four o'clock this afternoon, and uh, I think they would, it would be good if you gave them that feedback directly if you, if you plan to go to that session. Um, yeah, we can work with them to produce better documentation, so, so uh, I think I'll just take it If we were to use this to automate tests and then send the output of any that's failed the test result, can that be done through this, uh, through this tool set? So you, you want the output to be... So we've got automated builds and stuff that we run on our system. Yes. We want to implement some, some unit testing here. Yep. We want to then find anything that's failed yep. in unit test and automate that, and say, in an email to say, yes. these are the tests, so we can do that with the tool set. Um, not with this tool set, but your, your continuous integration tool should be able to do that for you, because this, right. will fail. This, this, this will fail in your build system, and your build system will have an alerting feature, and sure. that can send you an email. So we can integrate this into our, uh, into our builds? You, you can, and this, this integrates, so one of the, I don't, we missed that on that slide, so I should, should have said that this in, integrates into continuous integration tools. Um, so T sql T comes with um, a, a report format, uh, an XML format that is compatible with most CI tools. Okay, moving on to SQL Connect. Um, who's heard of SQL Connect? Okay, so not many people. So this is a, who's heard of SQL Source Control? Good. So this is like SQL Source Control, providing that experience in Visual Studio. So it allows you to associate a database, a development database, with a Visual Studio project. The advantage of having a project is that you can put it in your solution. You can then um, commit um, application changes and database changes atomically. Uh, or maybe you just prefer Visual Studio because that's where you do most of your, your developments. Um, and this uses the same backend repository as SQL Source Control. So if you have people using Management Studio in your organization and some people who use Visual Studio, they, they can use the respective tools and collaborate with each other. And uh, now screenshots. And this is what it looks like. Um, so here you can see there's a new project type here that's under the, the, your solution. Of course, you could have your, your ASP.NET or C Sharp um, projects in this solution as well. If you open an object um, from the, um, the hierarchy here, it will it'll open it up in a connected query window. So this query window is just like one you find in Management Studio. It's brought up the alter procedure and you can execute that against your database. It's got a synchronize button that will push those changes back to your project, at which point you can commit your changes like you would any of your other Visual Studio changes. Um, any questions about that? Well, that show, do you execute that? Will you show the execution? Does the, the execution plan exist in Visual Studio? No, it will not show you any sort of results. Now, it will show you the, it will show you the, um, the results. The output. Yeah, but yeah. So you'll, you'll get the results. But uh, I, I don't think that the, the, the execution plan functionality, if that's what you're asking, is available in Visual Studio just yet. And that's something that Microsoft may add in the future, but um, yeah, so I, I can't answer that. Any other questions? Moving on to. Um, so, quick question: Are any of you application developers do you dabble in the application side of Kotal? Perfect. So, you guys might have heard of the performance profile already. Um, so, we've been going through, we've been tweaking stuff, and hopefully, those of you who aren't on the sort of coding side of it, you can get something out of this as well. So, we've done a few things recently. We've um, tweaked the way that we're actually pulling through the 
um, SQL side of things, so you no longer actually have to tell us that you want a profile, your SQL calls and stuff. That's now done automatically for you. Um, and we can now also profile both um, database uh, on your local machine or ones that are actually coming back through into it from the remote machine, which I think is really cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, we can now automatically profile your SQL calls as well. So there's one less step for you to be able to pull that through. And the sort of other big side of it is that we're now you're now able to see what code is actually calling your SQL and what SQL is doing to your code, things like that. So this is the latest version of the formula very hard and the new stuff is this little icon just here. So we're now throwing all of your SQL calls directly into the stack. So you can see that this method has called this function and that zoomed, zoomed it in a little bit. So we've made it really bloody obvious that your SQL call is there and you can simply follow it back up the stack to see what's going on. And in the other view we've got, which um, lists <coughs> out every single database call that the application made whilst we've been profiling. Um, so you can actually hop back the other way. So from here you can hop straight into this view to check the entire call now. Alternatively you can go from here, click on the .NET button and it'll throw you straight back into the code and you can then drill back up through the stack to figure out what's going on. Um, so that's what we've been working on at the moment. Um, come and see me if you want any more info because we've been tweaking a lot more of the UI as well but I wanted to keep it sort of concentrated to the SQL side of things because that's hopefully what you guys are interested in being here. Um, any questions about that stuff? No? Are there any anti-performance profile users in the room? Yes. Well, you've heard this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, oh, this is a, it's probably a bit of a novelty question, but yeah, good does it profile both the .NET side and the SQL side together is that a general idea? Yes, so when you hit start profiling, you use the application and it pulls through all the information. Um, so <coughs> just here you can see that you can go through all of your code that's being profiled at that time. Then when your code makes a call, to a database, it throws it straight in there. So you can actually see what, so if you say you've got a link layer going on and you're not entirely sure what that link layer is doing, um, you can actually see directly what tools it's making and how it's structuring the SQL in there that you might not have access to otherwise. And is it a standalone program or is it plugged into Visual Studio? Um, it's a standalone program, but in the pro version we have a Link in Visual Studio, so you can just fire it straight up from Visual Studio and get from there. Yes. If I'm looking into a SQL Azure database, will it still show the times? Yes, it should do. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, yes. another thing. We we show you the time that the SQL call takes to first result, so you can actually see the actual time that it's taking to pull back the first result, and we're going to be tweaking that slightly to add things like the average time and the total amount of time to pull through that result, so you should be able to have all of the data you need for that side of it. What's, sorry. Sorry. what's, the, what's the overhead to the profile? I was just thinking, would you run it on a production system? Because we've had scenarios where stuff's been going bad, um, yes. It's obviously not been profiled properly in a test environment, and it's taken ages to actually find out where the yeah. problem is. <coughs> so, in an EP, early access program that we're going to start in about a month's time, we're going to um, start rolling out um, remote profiling, which will mean this, as it, as it stands, is quite heavy on the machine it's running on, and we know that just because it's doing a lot of processing. However, we're creating an agent that can sit on another, another machine that's very light, and it'll throw back all of the information to the main, main application, so you can then analyze it and stuff on that, on your local machine. 
So hopefully that will be a lot better for you as well. Do you collect any data or metadata about back the query results of how many columns or how much data has been sent back, what are row sizes, what are record set sizes? Moment, no. No, it will literally just pull back to see how much I've taken for it. Um, but if that's something that you think would be good, it would be good to have a chat with you later and figure out what those specific means are. We use a lot of asynchronous uh, stuff with Service Broker. Is okay. there any, any chance that this is going to incorporate analyzing that? At the moment, we're on a sort of fact finding mission for async to figure out how much people actually use it. Because from the from what we've found out so far, um, not many people use it knowingly, at least. <laughs> um, so we're definitely sort of looking to see how much interest there is in the async side of it to try and pull it through. Oh, another thing this does, um, just on the sort of off side, um, we also profile Oracle as well, if you do any Oracle stuff. Um, there's a question in the other room. Thank you. I just have a quick question for the audience. So, I have the guys that put their hands up for dabbling in .NET. I'd just be interested to know how many of you do ASP.NET stuff as well, if you could just raise your hand. So, that's pretty oh, much everyone who says .NET. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Cool. Any more questions? Yeah, the remote service. Are you planning on integrating some other tools like Splunk and things like that, but um, for just general capturing of event data on the database? Um, at the moment, we're in very early stages, but again, if I can grab the details, it's good to sort of get in touch with you and have a offline chat about that. Perfect. And that's it. Index Manager. Um, uh, who's heard of the game's Damn Tools Week process? So, once a quarter, <laughs> once a quarter, um, Red Gates uh, gives all the project teams a week to go and do whatever they feel like. And out of Damn Tools Week comes quite a lot of innovation, um, quite a lot of just trying things. Um, one of the things that come out of it is SQL Index Manager, at least that's where it started. Um, so SQL Index Manager uh, is um, uh, a tool that will, you run it to give you a graphical view of your indexes, their sizes, and it's really focused about helping you uh, manage the performance of your index by identifying which are fragmented, their degree of fragmentation, and recommending steps to take, whether it's uh, uh, an index rebuild or an index rebuild. Um, it's got uh, um, so we some advice some actions to take. It's got uh, configurable thresholds, um, so you can configure your level of sensitivity to the degree of fragmentation, um, and then it's got an option to either do a one-click one -click index maintenance, at which point it will run through the list of recommendations and it will either reorg or rebuild the index indices one by one, um, or also you can output as a script and then go and run it inside management studio. Um, so it's, uh, and this will give you real-time feedback on uh, the index maintenance as it's proceeding. Um, so this tool was in beta for a while, it's recently gone into proper release, so it's now available to be purchased. Um, that's a, a screenshot. Um, it's definitely a V1, um, by which I mean functionality will work, but there's lots of things we can think of uh, to do next beyond what we've just described. Um, it would be interesting to hear if you have any thoughts, um, so I should have asked at the start if you even heard of Index Manager. Was there anybody who was aware of Index Manager before? A couple of people, a few people. Um, so uh, that's SQL Index Manager. Any immediate feedback? It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very lightweight. You can run the scan at any time you want to um, because the way it looks at the end is very lightweight. But don't fix your indexes. Yeah, the production <coughs> server is busy. Yeah. Put that in the maintenance window so I'd script it and schedule it would be my advice to everyone picks it up. Okay, cool, thank you. One of the things with the index is just to understand its usage pattern and whether it's been updated and actually if it's useful. Will this incorporate those features sort of down the road to say this is a very overhead, overhead and you know, it's not been used much actually as 
operational uh, index, but it's you know, replicated closely. We do have those stats around that. So we're, we're building so I, you know, our plans around what we might do next, so this sort of feedback is exactly really very relevant. It identifies duplicates and that sort of stuff, yeah. Yeah. That's right, it doesn't tell you about missing these trees uh, and so forth. Are there any sort of key benefits of this over and above sort of automated scripts of looking at the DMVs and re indexing them based on their thresholds, naively anyway? Or is this it's just to sort of do it on demand, really? Yes, yeah. do it on demand, yeah. it's quite pretty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Down towards a week, we let the project team do whatever they fancy, and, and quite honestly, Somebody got really motivated about this, pulled some people together um, uh, to build something um, to see, you know, to a certain extent, to see whether people would value something like this as opposed to going for, you know, um, a script sticking stuck in a job somewhere, whether they like the idea of getting a graphical view um, and how far would they ultimately like to go. So, <coughs> one of the things I, I do with my scripts at the moment is then find the last time we've actually done a re or a rebuild. And actually track the uh, use of that and maybe just the thought back as if we're doing like um, yeah, that sort of stuff. Um, these are the sort of things that, that a tool to make useful for bringing to my enterprise would be neat to have that. So that's a nice one. I like that one definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in, in, well, in fact, at the moment it runs only locally um, as the client. Yes, it's local. Yes. So that's the thought, actually. So, in other words, if you, um, so in other words, you would install the client on your server right now. Well, the rest is uh, trying to pull that back later. Because we do the same, we sort of analyze the indexes when the last run which is clients. Well, for that, you want to pull that back and run the sort of user interface. Yes. So that makes it a bit more tricky. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Is there any way of scheduling this? Or just off an email with that data every day? Not at the moment, um, that's one that I have at the top of my mental list. Uh, so I'm not directly responsible for this, but that's one that's kind of an obvious thing. Although, interestingly, yesterday when we presented on this, scheduling wasn't plucked out from the audience as a suggestion, and um, lots of other things came out, like we have today. So, but thank you, yes. Uh, it isn't at the moment schedulable. It's not in any way. No, it's uh, 95. As a user license. So it's not for sale, that's for the user. Have you spoken an article at all? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. <laughs> Is that a problem in Oracle? No, no, I'm just wondering. No, no, I just wondered if index. I just wondered if index maintenance yeah. generally was a problem in Oracle. I'm not a DBA, but I, I presume you would have a problem in Oracle. Do you track the time that these uh, rebuilds take? So is there a report to say that you've run these in this, how many you've done, and how long it took? Do you track that at all yeah, over time? Probably not the moment, but not the moment. But thank you. This 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 is this is really useful, so uh, statistics as well, I mean, So uh, what would you like to do with them? As in uh, over the last update. Right. Okay. So this is all related. Mm -hmm. Reporting on it or updating the statistics after the index rebuild? Um, well, I guess if you just want to do a snapshot, I can tell you when your statistics are on it. Because you might not have a busy fragment of index with the statistics on that day. Right, yeah. Understood, yeah. Okay. Thank you. SQL data. Justin. <laughs> okay, well, I'll sign off Sunday. Who can guess what a SQL data refresh does? No. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Got a volunteer? No? Is it not obvious why? Is it not? <coughs> is it broken down from the wire plate? Yeah. Oh, why would you want to do that? Okay. Yeah. Don't hit down the wire for safety test. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well done. So that's what it does. Who, who, has to, who has this problem of having to bring back live data? <laughs> I'm not the question yet. <laughs> to development and test environments. Is that something that people hear from regularly? Yeah. Are there any pain points around that? 
Catalanization? Size. Size. Environment by restoring production backup. So, but here's some, yeah, so obviously you picked up on size and obviously the anonymization is, is important as well. Um, so, this, this is a concept, it's, it's not a tool that we have. Um, we, we have a tool, uh, and I'll show you a screenshot later, that does the anonymization of the data. It, it's, uh, it's, we, we took a um, SQL data generator in a downfalls week and we adapted that tool to do anonymization. Um, but we'd like to explore whether there's a, an opportunity to do something more generic that is designed just to optimize that process of taking the production database and bring it down to uh, development test environments. And maybe we, we can think about ways of um, dealing with the size issues as well. Uh, we have some, some technology, uh, some hyperback technology that can, that, that can uh, compress or create virtual databases. Um, so, um, any thoughts on, on this, whether this, this is something that you would want in your organization? It would need to be repeatable. Okay. Because your tests you can test, they actually require a specific ID or specific details to actually test accurately and repeatedly. Okay. <coughs> Isn't this now deprecated with source control and uh, SQL test? Um, so SQL test is designed for test-driven development, so unit testing, um, not necessarily all forms of testing. You, you will still need a QA uh, department doing normal system testing on a database. Yeah, but with something like Bing search, you just like copy a virtual environment as is on the last snap, and then source control to bring it back to being a, a dev environment with, okay. with the release branch. Yes. Well, that, that, is that that's the sort of thing this tool could do, and this, this oh, right. tool could bring the database back and then take the latest in source control, apply the schema changes to bring it up to the, that level. That, that's, that's, not, that's something that we considered. Uh, but uh, the, um, the challenge there is possibly bringing the data. I mean, how large is, is the database that, that you have to restore? Is it not? It varies. It varies, okay. Any other, any other thoughts about this? So I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So this is a, here's a list of things that we just discussed that, that this might do. So specify, specify subsets is something that we considered, but I think it's quite difficult. And version restore is, is a technology that does demand backup files, so you could take a backup and then instead of restoring it in a traditional way and get um, taking up that storage, you could just mount it so that you don't take you create a small block file in the This is the data master tool. So um, it's based on data generator and it looks very much like data generator. Who here has used data generator before? Okay. Um, so it's very simple. You just specify the columns that you want to mask and you run it and it will mask it for you and just replace it with um, generated data instead of using data. Team City plugin. Who here? sets off the continuous integration and that just applies that change to a database or a number of databases. And uh, it means that if you do have, um, you could keep test databases up to date or to development environments or uh, anything you like, you just specify a target. And uh, it means that you don't have to script using SQL, um, SQL compare and SQL compare command lines. 
So you don't need those skills, it's, it's just a um, question of plugging into your configuration tool. And this is what it looks like. So you specify where your database is in source control, and the, the target database and server details, and it will just keep that up to date as you mentioned. SSAS compare. Again, this, uh, the, the product manager who deals with this isn't here today. Um, does anyone use SSAS at all? SSAS? Three? Ten and a half? Okay, okay so this is not going to be, this next question isn't going to be statistically valid. Um, multi dimensional or tabular? <laughs> multi dimensional or tabular? Anyone tabular? Both. And, and does, does anyone else use tabular or is it just multi dimensional? You're looking at tabular? Yeah. Okay. So, thanks. Because we've got a tool that allows you to compare cubes and deploy changes from, from, uh, from the source of the target. A bit, a bit like SQL compare with the cubes. Um, SSIS, does anyone use SSIS? Yeah. It might be more than SSIS. How about SSRS? It's in between the two. Yeah, that's the uh, same as the thing. Thank you. It's next SQL monitor. Can I ask a question? Who's got a right arm? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I need half the audience compared. Uh, I guess you're doing one. Ah, it's your job. Sorry. So once again, the product manager is not here. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, right. So actually, I'd like to do a couple of, a couple of show of hands. If you're still awake. Um, not show both hands. Um, roughly, can you, can you give your hand up, please, if you consider yourself to be a DBA? And consider yourself to be a developer. <laughs> right, and if you're something else, like BI person or systems administrator or an Oracle person. Cool, thank you. Um, hopefully you've, you're familiar with SQL Monitor, um, which is our uh, real-time monitoring and alerting system. So I'm going to go on for another show of hands. Who is doing some form of database monitoring? whether it's using a third-party tool or using custom scripts or something. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, SQL Monitor today, one of those options that you could use for monitoring, it's a, an on-premise tool, so it's monitoring, it runs in your environment, it's monitoring your SQL servers, um, collecting information across the distributed environment, uh, bringing it back to a central repository, um, analyzing the data and alerting you if there are problems, sending you emails, letting you also analyze the collected data then to look at performance metrics. Um, we are going to release a software as a service edition of SQL Monitor. Um, the reason is that there's, we think there's lots of people out there who are not monitoring and we're, we're kind of wondering why we've got some hypotheses. I'd actually like to again do a couple of shows of hands. So, so those people who are monitoring, could you put your hands up, please, if you're not monitoring? I'm sure that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Do the light on checking in? No. Okay, so if you're not monitoring, are you not monitoring because you, do you think you should be monitoring, or do you just don't have the time, or do you think you don't need to do monitoring? Who, who, who actually thinks monitoring they don't need to do monitoring in their environment? Okay, definitely want to talk to you about this. <laughs> Um, and, and are you not monitoring because you just haven't got around to it? Uh, is it because actually it's too expensive to buy any third party tool? Yeah, so it's good. not easy to, to integrate into all of our other monitoring solutions, our, our main monitoring solution. It seems to be like you've done, you, you put it in an island, you've got your own centralised store, right. which doesn't integrate to everything else. So do you, do you use Splunk? We use Splunk, yeah, yeah. everything except SQL because we can't. Okay. So if there was an add-in that could integrate to Splunk, why ask for it before? Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's interesting. Um, so um, so we, we may be off target that maybe the action that we need to be doing is integrating into a monitoring system. Um, that, to a certain extent, comes down to the various roles of people and whether the people are actually monitoring have a a degree of responsibility across the entire estate, or whether they're focused, uh, whether they can be focused on uh, on their SQL servers. 
Um, so this is, we're likely to have a first edition available, um, I believe it's late August. <coughs> um, the idea is that it will be fairly, we're going to try and make it as easy to try out as possible, rather than have to set up the on-premise environment, and I'll show us a quick slide about sort of the architecture, just to get, get people get their heads around it. Um, you would download a small um, thing that we're going to call a relay, which in effect collects data and passes it up to the hosted service, um, and that would be it. Uh, and then um, it would be based on another subscription, so you would only pay for it as you were using it, whereas you lower upfront cost and commitment. And so very roughly the architecture would look like this. So here is your on-premise environment. This is the thing you would install on-premise, not on the SQL servers that you're monitoring, but on a machine, that then can uh, pass the secure encrypted data up to SQL monitoring in the cloud. Um, certainly someone must be making a lot of money out of cloud graphics these days, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, and up here is where we store the data, where we do the analysis. Um, we obviously provide you, obviously, as a web interface, uh, which is one of the reasons doing SQL Monitor is uh, well suited to this. And again, still, uh, as well as accessing it through your web browser, you will still get email notifications of uh, problems. So I'm interested whether anybody has any immediate reactions to uh, a hosted version of Monitor. Does anybody think it's a great idea? Anybody think they would never touch with a barge pole for any particular reason? Are there any opinions in the room? What would be the uh, sensitivity of the So, uh, statistics it's, st it's statistical data. Um, uh, it's data. It's, it's performance monitors, but query fragments also are included. Would that be a concern? Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, would the fact that it was secured give you any sense of comfort, or? Um, I think it, it would give you a bit more comfort, but obviously a lot of companies are a little bit insecure about sending off sensitive data to third parties. And it's a push or a pull? It's a push from the relay service up to the client. It seems like if you have to install a relay service on premises, then there's not much difference between installing that and installing the app itself. Because the app itself doesn't seem that heavyweight to me to install, set up, configure. Yeah, we've sort of we've made a lot of our own back by making the installation process of SQL Monitor actually quite straightforward, but you still have to. We can make we can make it harder. Yeah, we'll do that yeah. eventually. So I'll make it better. But we still but we still have to you still have to install a SQL Server database and you've got to configure IIS or some web server. So we have there is there are some additional steps here. Um, personally, I don't know that the install is likely to be as big a block as perhaps just the perception at the start, before people actually get around to try and see monitor, it's going to take a lot of effort. Um, but you know, we will, we will see, time will tell. Who would like things in the cloud now, so <laughs> in my Who likes stuff in the cloud? Who like, <laughs> yeah, not the cloud developer in the back corner. But seriously, who, 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 who currently is running any part of their business in the cloud? We can ask you to say what it is. Is it, is it a package solution like Office 365, or you, have you moved part of your actual application, your own internal infrastructure into the cloud? ITSM ticketing. ITSM ticketing, okay. We use it for um, giving clients access to actually upload some files and some data that can be then sort of pre-cleansed and then brought into our environment. Whereas before the moment, the SFTP is kind of like, is a bit of a nightmare for a lot of people, so we've given them interface to actually kind of upload data, right. process it through our APIs, and then like a brief back end. Cool, good, thank you. Who, who else has hands up? saying they're doing some stuff in the cloud. Nobody else, that was it. And who's going to do, oh, sorry. Well, we're considering putting our uh, source control up there. Um, TFS, they uh, quite an option. Right? Yeah. Very new. Yeah, and, and actually on that point, who's, so you're considering that, who's considering doing something, whether it's looking at the cloud or actually have active plans to move some part of your operations to the cloud in the next 12 months? Okay, thank you. If, if this, uh, as with all of these things, if, if sorry, let me just finish the last bit, I'll come back. If, if, if this browser's will change, that kind of sounds interesting, you have an opinion, or you want to find out more, either on the form that you're interested, but also if you go to sqlmonitor.redgate.com, you can sign up to be notified as to when this comes available if you'd like to get involved in trying to attach.
says the charge service, are you charging per month server per network data stores in the cloud? I think per alert. I believe it's going to be per moment and server per month. So in effect, it's like the current per server licensing, but paid on a monthly basis for as many servers you have for as many months as you use the service. Any more questions? When is it? This is a silly question. The cloud? Yes. Where's the next? Um, I think we are. Uh, I think we're looking at either Amazon or Azure. I think yeah. at the moment Amazon's on the winning side. Um, but I think it's, it depends how what people want and how we're going to architect it really. But where it, it's still very early stages, which is what I've been talking to you guys. You know. But that would be Europe? Uh, no, most likely the US. I mean, we're not, but is that so the data sensitivity of not going in outside the EU? Is that what we're talking about? Here? I would imagine we'll have to think about offering multiple solutions so you, know, you choose which side of the pond you want things to be hosted on. Because the US is going to have the same problem with getting data out of the US as well. Yeah. I think I think five months or three or four months ago, it, it would have been clearly uh, aimed at the US, but as has made big strides um, and it's caused it a long way. So I think the, the discussion is still on, but uh, I don't think fundamentally it'll change the architecture, it'll change the implementation of the issues. Thank you. Deployment manager. So the point manager is a tool to deploy your .NET stroke SQL application up through various stages, uh, dev, UAT, and ultimately production. Does anyone uh, currently do that in any way? I mean, do you do, yes? Does anyone use any tooling to do it? It's a manual process. It's a manual process. Sorry? It's a manual process. It's a Okay, but do you, do you put all the way up to production? With uh, the no, no, no. Pure UAT. UAT. And how about, oh, you, you've just got database changes. Have you got some application changes as well? Yes. And is that done independently? Um, yeah, we do it both manually. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll put the Changes up, then we'll put the application changes up, and then it's going to do something. Okay. We've got a custom in house application. We've built uh, <coughs> both the database and the application layer, and they can kind of do whatever build level and use the gold builds and all that type of stuff. So, mm -hmm. so the idea here is that you create a pack package um, sort of uh, from your, 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 your .NET side of things and, and database side of it would either be a separate package or package integrated into the .NET package. And that's the thing that you push up the various levels. And uh, you, you, have, you could have different permissions applied to different users who are, are permitted to, to apply changes to uh, various service. So maybe uh, only some users get, get to push to production, whereas developers get to push through the development environments and so on and so forth. Um, I think we have screenshots here. So this is what the tool looks like at the moment. Um, I think this will be We'll have a, a release in a couple of months' time. Uh, Colin, can you remember? No, I think that. I think it'll be out shortly. Yeah. If, if you're interested in, in as, as all that does, you can see you've got the development staging, your AT production. You've got various projects along here. And uh, you can imagine uh, sort of like moving these things up um, to, uh, to production. And uh, you have different versions that will be on at different stages. And uh, it's sort of a push button thing, you just click on a button and it moves it because it does all the type of stuff and that's also makes it for you. No question. This is obviously you're showing like one one product, one you know, the various stages. Yeah. If you've got say, you know, we've got a couple of hundred different clients that are constantly in flux of change. Yeah. This is a, this is kind of showing one page for one client or one applicant, you know. How how does your tool does that make you for for multiple as deployments, different builds at different stages of builds. And that's, that's, not, that's actually got multiple projects on it. So the rows correspond to different projects. So you know, so you're on the private website, you've got the internet. Um, so, so yeah, each of these represents a, a set of projects. Is that so, but we may have, like what you've shown there, that, that could be the state for one specific client because it's got different layers and different things. 
we have a couple of hundred of those. Okay. So, right. so it's just it's kind of how we because the tool gives the ability to kind of like choose. So you'd have to say, uh, so one client would have multiple packages. Yeah, they could have actually, you know, three or four projects. So if they have one for product, that might be their one project, and maybe another project for another team. And so that's you, why it's... You want to segregate them in an order that are more sort of... Uh, in a sense you want to be able to see, like, a, a, a you know, client level or all the projects, or just a single project, or actually across for a specific, you know, build of an application. This, this is what, this what is, it is. This is what we're interested in. So, um, if I'm, if I'm grabbing after this, we can show you together with the, with the project manager who's in charge. This is some of the challenges that we're having. We've got a, an application we've got well, this, this is one of the things that Spreadgate has a problem internally. So, you know, but let's, let's get, get back to Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? I'm not sure if there's another slide. Ah, okay. Here you go. So, what's coming soon is um, database package support. So, we, the idea is that you have some sort of database package. At the moment, um, you can you can run a SQL script um, using the, the, the current tool, but that doesn't have any more um, intelligence compared to anything that's just running SQL scripts. So we're thinking about doing something that has validations and checks the targets, make sure it's the right version or plan to change, and, and maybe some validation afterwards. So to, to properly build a database uh, supporting for that, and all that is something. So um, if you put something out and decide this, it's it's buggy or there's some reason why you want to go back you know, to have a push button fall back. And uh, some way of uh, monitoring that what you pushed out there is doing the job and, and uh, I guess I guess the immune system would, would potentially trigger a fall back if, if it's identified anything that uh, was, was suspect. So the Hyperback engine, um, some technology we acquired a couple of years ago, and um, the engine uh, will do under the hood, with transparent to SQL Server, it will do um, compression and encryption of data being made by SQL Server, and uh, it works with it works under the SQL Server where it's happening. So SQL Storage Compress is a product that uh, is used to compress uh, live production databases. And the engine underneath supports encryption as well, and, and you can turn this on within SQL Storage Compress today, um, and uh, it lets you compress your data and encrypt it. Encrypt it on the SAN, uh, if it's stored on the SAN, encrypt the data in flight, but present it to SQL Server unencrypted. Yeah, SQL yeah. Server requires no changes and it's all transparent to SQL Server. Um, but, who cares about this? So right now we're focusing on the compression benefits because it's very clear there's lots of people with large volumes of data. So we're kind of interested in who cares, who cares about encrypting their data. Is there anybody other than Neil uh, who is a customer of SQL Storage Compress? Yeah, speak on it. Um, uh, is there anybody at the moment who either is in encrypting their data, uh, their database data, this is not their backup data, or has a need to, whether it's a regulatory need or some other need. Okay. Be interested in a few people. Um, and uh, can I ask, actually, since there's a few people, maybe I'll, I'll ask directly. So, can I ask, what, what's driving you to do that? What's your need? Uh, we hold um, bank papers and credit card companies. Okay. So, is it uh, regulatory? Yes, yeah, all piece of that. Piece of that. Okay, yes. And yourself, sir? Uh, it's the single biggest barrier for us to go for that on our house. Be able to encrypt the actual data. Yeah, yeah. But we don't want it. We don't want the unencryption on the cloud. We want unencryption at that first. Right. So yeah. yeah. And John, did you have? That? I would be interested in looking into it. But, um, okay. Our, our data doesn't go offsite because it's not encrypted. Okay. So we're, we're wondering who cares. We're wondering why you came. It's great. Mm -hmm. Give me some input. But also, although we've got you know the core encryption, there's more to it than that. Uh, we expect that people are going to want things like key management functionality, ability to do key replacement, key uh, uh, change over time, auditing, maybe compliance certification. So basically we're actively researching this because what we've got is we've got some core technology, but that isn't a product. So if this is of interest, please do tick the box on the form. 
Uh, as David was saying earlier, it's really important to us to get feedback from people. These sessions are really valuable to us. Um, and follow up afterwards, being able to pick the phone up, have a chat with you, maybe come visit you, uh, and we want to make it worth people's while. You can visit them. It would be really valuable to please be able to follow up. Is there any other questions on that? I think we've got one after this, haven't we? I don't know what it is now. Yeah. Oh, we've got the end of the to that. Right, okay, I've got that. Right, okay. So, um, who, is there anybody in the room using SQL Backup Pro? Yes. Okay, a couple of people. Okay. But we, I know there's a few more people who put their hands up as a DBA. So, SQL Backup Cloud Edition is is an active discussion at Red Game right now. So what if you could you could back up to the cloud, directly to the cloud from within the same piece of software that you're using for taking your local backups? Um, what if you could launch it to the cloud, maybe have a DR server running in the cloud, um, restoring uh, the transaction log backups instead of what I what if we What if we could do something quite smart technically so that even though you've got very large volumes of backup data, we, use some, we do some clever things so you don't have to transfer all that data across the cloud. So, and what if when, we, when it landed in the cloud, what if actually we could make you a significant storage saving even beyond the data compression that we currently have by doing some clever things by looking for redundancy? And you could instantly restore then your databases in the cloud. It's again some technology that we've actually got in development. And all of this you get from Redgate. Would you get all of this from a company like Redgate? So that's a combination of the software and the cloud storage and the services in the cloud to help you to manage this data. Would this be useful to you? Would you replace tape as your off-site storage mechanism with something like this? Um, would you replace your DR solution? If you, if you search, you'll find DR, AAS, DR as a service being offered by vendors. Um, but is anybody interested in this? If anybody, if any of this sounds interesting, um, again, really would like to talk to you. Um, this is an active area of research. We've been doing some research into the technology and we're doing still market research. Um, so if this sounds really interesting to anybody, please tick the box. Can I ask, is anybody now thinking this sounds interesting and is going to tick the box? Okay. Yeah, but the solutions are already out there to do this. Yep. I mean, go and have a look at Veeam and then decide whether you want to waste your time. Seriously. I mean, it's being done. Yeah, and well, you can do it now with Dropbox, right? No, no, no. I mean, have a look at Veeam, what they're doing on SQL Server. It's okay. incredible. I will do, thank you. There's one disadvantage or drawback possibly is this requires connectivity to the cloud. So if you went to fully on this type of environment. If you, for example, in DR site and you've lost your external connectivity, you kind of had a problem at the point. So, so it's one of the DR points that we've looked at of where we store our information also from a security standpoint. But it's like one of our DR points is actually external loss of connectivity mm -hmm. through you know, the, the vibe or whatever. Um, and having something fully, like just in the cloud only, would be a DR problem if we didn't have some way of actually carrying on our services without. So that's something that, that is kind of the, the problem area for us at the moment is to look at this just as a way up. So. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think this replaces having still local backups. No. It's the um, replacement, it's a potential. It was the replacement of the R solution, that was the one bit that kind of the yes. is, yeah. is, is something. I think like that's, quite honestly, I think that's B2, B3, B4 in, in sort of like a, a potential project. But actually, because we've got multi-use sites uh, in the environments where there are multi data centers, actually having some way it can go to the cloud and actually then come down the other part is something that possibly is, is, is an addition to the PR that we have today, as opposed to trying to get that cross site link stuff. So. Okay. Thank you. Any more comments? I think we've got one more to talk about. David? Do we use a SQL prompt? Um, I'd just like to draw your attention to this. We put this in a while back, but uh, it's, it's quite hidden in the, um, the, the bottom of the SQL prompt menu. Has anyone seen the screen before, the experimental pieces? Yeah, that proves my point. 
So, so the idea is that we, we put some features in here that are maybe not ready for the actual release. So because um, we don't yet know whether they work well, well enough for users, whether they, they, they meet expectations. So we put them in here, and we're hoping that people try them out and give us feedback and let us know whether uh, they're worth putting in the, the, the main tool. So this one example is refresh suggestions. So you'll know that if you change, change your schema, um, SQL, SQL prompt does automatically um, update its cache. So you have to you have to select that option and uh, pick it up to date, and then you have to do that repeatedly every time. So this is this it for you. Uh, one at the bottom here, tabs and seven spaces. Some people like their formatting to tabs and seven spaces, and that's, that's an option that produces it on, and there are some others as well. So please do take a look at that first. Um, lastly, you've got a website called Legit Labs, and we put the new stuff on here, so um, please um, take a look at that, and you can download things like SSES Compare, and, uh, data mask if we care, and we'll be putting some other new stuff on there in the coming months. And uh, I think that's it. So, so, so lastly, um, well, any questions you may have, but um, we're particularly interested to know whether there's anything that we should have uh, shown on the screen today that we haven't. So, are there any tools that we should be doing that we're not? That you think you know that there's a there's a gap in the market? There's a tool that you do that isn't really integrated. Yes, that was probably that one of the projects. It has been available by Labs, which is where I yeah. got it and installed it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of referenced in backup now, but in case it in a much more friendly and more integrated, it's really useful. So it could be more integrated into backup. Okay. Uh, Oracle versions of various tools, like the Rindex uh, deployment okay. tool. Also, I don't think we've got time to go a bit more into your deployment tool. Does it just deploy updates to objects? Uh, does it do static data updates, things like that? Um, this, is, this, is, this is our deployment tool. Yeah, yeah we are yes. using static, uh, static data updates and code updates and object updates all in one timed block. And uh, the deployment tool, there's no reason why that shouldn't work for Oracle as well. Um, I think our main party will be getting working in the Microsoft First, but uh, I, I definitely think that's going to be within the scope of the project. Yes. And uh, we already have uh, old versions of SQL Compare and SQL Compare. Great. Well, thanks very much. Don't get really likes. Yeah, hard and collecting the end of life on the way out.
don't be a snowman. I don't know if this is a very good job. It's 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 a very we use the effects, so I would I probably wouldn't buy that. I'd probably do more interest in the average people with my TFS. Because we've got a bit of a hack there. Yeah, it's 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 Okay, thanks. Okay, if that makes it. Because you have to be a little bit of a so say you put a version on the stage of the music, how does that do you know if you want to merge a bar or does the system take the place of the music? Yeah, so backing up from the answer as well, backing up to the And what the thing we have, so we've got, traditionally we've got two desktop server, so the is the to the same way the to go to the to go to the to to go to the to to go to the to to the to Yes, because it all stopped there. Because it's a big access. I missed the uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, 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 it's easy for you to do all the next changes there, but you just have to sort that out. No, no, but it was the one thing that we did. The only thing you really need is about chair session. What I was talking about, the Tom and the is it and so, then we have to build the electric connection between the Get to the point where it's just about to dump it to the right. And instead of that, just dump it to something. Um, it could be space and we just pop up and then it cross the other side. This isn't working. As that far go here and then pretty much back in the session. So it acts as a square. It's like a trial period, really. It just stops working. And then you can get the link. So you have two things. Yeah, uh, the X, 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 the X
or even a set at the same position on an uncoupled Okay, so it never gets to the, uh, the, the ML bits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sounds very clever. <laughs> is that actually technically feasible? Well, I don't know. It's in memory. Yeah, I wouldn't guarantee that that's, that, that's, that's, that's possible. You know, just assuming that both of them are identical, they might not be. It might be sort of like some issue identical, but I can't necessarily just take the same sort of chunk of it and put it in. But maybe you can. Uh, <laughs> the schema doesn't change. It's because you can provide the GPS and feedback. That's true. What you're told, actually. So I think it's a top lesson they got in. I'm sure that some people have written their own scripts that just run through that script, adding a few goes. Yeah. And that has been good solved some problems. You might want to try that. Generally, you just generate photos and every n lines of add a batch separator, and then try to load that. We'll just tell you that there's worth a try. Uh, would be well, is it very transactive if you're interested? Uh, I'm talking about it 18 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an option. Yeah. 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 If it's not yeah. transactional, then the whole lot of comments they provide might be Yeah, so you would want to be transactional. Well, no, I'm just thinking what can be so easy to do. It's a generation of data. There's no option to do that. You generate that without transactions. And I don't even be interested in I, I keep thinking in my mind that maybe you're not interested in that, but maybe it's just a, a, a pipe dream that we're just kind of what's coming is through secretly being holy to it. Just take it and uh really to add that and we're not too much. Then just hold those new number and we'll just take it off it straight away. You need a new t shirt. Just take it. I'm not doing it here, is it? Sorry. It's just a support team in the application. It's it's part of my job to get people to sign up. Right. We, we're all Mr. Open to find people to sign up for this. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so you can tell you can really not to have to that, but that's pretty much what you can do. Right. Uh, yeah, what you need an option to do is here is to sort of add batch of phrases or something. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely been asked about before. Perfect. Well, thank you very but in many ways, you see, this tool was designed to move yeah. 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 It it's just it's just been misused no, to this by <laughs> sufficient people so that nice we even sort of advertised it for this use case, but it was never been designed for it in the first place. Well no, the fact is if 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 they ship them up fast for us, yeah. in a day, we'll have something like about ten gig of off-fouting Because we work in you know, twenty-five frames in a second accuracy because it's times of the fact you set up like a film on it. Yeah, application would be better to do it. Inserting those, and you have to you write some code to do that. Yeah. It's probably not a horrendous amount of code. So I can do that back in the API, just as it's out in my Hopefully. I, would, I, wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to commit, but it sounds like you should, should be able to do that. I see, I got the OK for buying the API, and then we just try it and we thought, well, hang on. We've only done it for two days, and we can't bring it out. Yeah, try, try it for the new guy and, and, and uh, do that as Do you have that open in my business card? That's strong. Two people went out for a fag break at the start of lunch, and it's all pink lines. Now, uh, fag is left. Is there a window open? All drifting back in? No, I think what we've got some air handling here. It's maybe some of the people who stand in front of it, maybe it draws into the room. I'm thinking so. I think I gave them to a point. Monster databases every day, just in case. <laughs> so, 
Trevor Wicks of Dead Bass, isn't he, say, on the inside of Big Dom, the driver? Yeah. Okay, then. Right, well, thanks so much, Sammy. Um, well, that's the end. Uh, it was alright. It wasn't as good as yesterday's. So that's okay. We didn't publish yesterday's. Uh, no, well, it wasn't because of that. It's because, uh, well, this specific session, um, we didn't have as many product managers who, uh, as we did yesterday. Oh, I see. I so, see. So, so it's harder to go the slides because we didn't have to wing it, but the ones that we uh, I see. That we got to manage ourselves. This morning's went okay, apart from the, the abandoned bargain migrations, as usual. Well, um, John Theron said you guys are really great speakers. So you had Gareth yesterday and then John Theron. Oh, really? I did, I did wonder because I was, you know, John Theron, especially when the bug happened. So thought, John Theron was like, they are absolutely brilliant. So oh, that's good. Um, do you need these white papers in here or should we? Uh, yeah, we don't need them in here any longer. No, well then we could perhaps keep some on the, the front desk. Yeah. yeah. And then, do you want to go and get yourself some lunch? Yes, I know. Um, I'm doing a round table thing. Yeah, right, you know. and have a seat. I didn't so think I could. I, I, I was going to try to clean up. Yeah. Um, this, this could be bins. These. Is that a bin? Okay. How do you turn it off? Um, well, there's a pause button, so you just press the, the red button again on the right. You press that red button. This again. one? Yeah, then it goes to pause. How do you... 